I, I no longer have that image as my screensaver. Okay. On that side of that building. Thank you. Are we, are we live now? Yes. Okay. Um, so I should, we should start. Yes. Yes. <laughs> It should say something like go. All right. Well, it said recording in progress. <laughs> you didn't hear it. OK, uh, with that, welcome, everyone, to the uh, Village of Marinette Board of Architectural Review for uh, January 4th, 2022. Um, and uh, Happy New Year to you all. Um, obviously, this is a uh, virtual meeting. Um, we're not able to meet in person yet. So that will come with its own uh, trials and tribulations. Um, in general, when we call on you, we'll ask you to share your materials on the screen. We'll review it, um, discuss it, and, and vote on it at the end in the normal way. Um, if there are uh, participants to the application, um, I'd ask that they all sign on at the same time as the presenter does in the event that there's questions or something that come up so that even if you have nothing to say, please do that because if something comes up later and you want to say something, we may, may not be able to get you on in time and then you'll say you had something to say. Yeah, and, and it's caused headaches for us. So if you, if you are a part of the um, application, please be ready to talk and be signed on. Don't be raising your hand down the road. <clears throat> um, if there's audience members who are interested in commenting or participating, uh, you should let us know via chat, raising your hand or whatever. I'll try to remember at the end to ask if, uh, if there are any people who wish to comment, if I should forget. But, you know, please do try to make yourself known and we'll, we welcome uh, your comments. All that said, uh, I will, we have the full board here tonight. Uh, so there should be, uh, there's no forum issues. I'll introduce them. There's uh, Andrew Wallowitz. Hello there. Uh, Yvonne Levin. Hi. Cindy Lee. And Larry Cohen. Hey, and myself, I'm William Binzer. And with that, I think uh, we can get started. Uh, the first uh, order of business then is uh, approval of the minutes from the meeting held on December 16th. I um, assume everyone's had a chance to review it. Are there any uh, questions or comments on those minutes? No. All right, there being no questions or comments, may I have a, a motion? I motion. No second. Okay, any opposed? Okay, the minutes are approved. And now, uh, the Bill, clarify. yeah. Do you want to announce that 611 First Street won't be heard? I was just, just I was just going to say public. that my understanding is that uh, the there's been a change to the agenda that. Um, 611 First Street is, is not going to be heard, um, uh, having not put up their uh, notice sign in a appropriately conforming manner. And so they'll be deferred to a future date. Um, and on we go. Okay. I don't know if they were here. Okay. Are they here and wanting to say anything or something? Um, somebody wants to chat. Somebody chatted. Let's see who chatted. No, this guy is about something else. Okay, this is somebody who wants to talk about 830 Pirates Cove when we Yeah, go. that's later. Yeah, that's I think yeah, way later. Um yeah, that's like near near the end. So okay, noted, and we will remember to ask for you. Um, 
Okay. All right, so the first item on the agenda then is uh, continued uh, business, which uh, would be uh, 219 Maple Avenue. Hey, this is Aaron, I was here last time. I'm gonna present 219 Maple Avenue. It's the same project, I'm gonna share my screen. So um, I believe the corrections that were needed was the panel count that was 19 instead of 20 on the layout. And we fixed that over here, uh, showing 20 panels. And also we include the window um, roofs over here on the design as well. Right, and my recollection is those were the issues that we needed to be able to stamp the drawings. Um, does, does anyone else on the board have anything uh, further to that? Not me, I think it's fine. <laughs> Okay, um, that it looks like this is what we, we asked for. Um, you can see the drawings are on the upper part of the roof and there are in fact 20 of them. So um, if nobody has any comments, can we get a motion to vote on them then? No motion. I second. All right. Um, any opposed? No. Okay. All right, very good. Thank you. And All right, thank you. That'll do it. Thank you. All right. Next up then is the uh, the regular uh, business, new business. Uh, first up is uh, three twenty three Mamaroneck Avenue. If anyone's here for 323 Mamaroneck Avenue, please raise your hand. He's here. He's chatting, but I don't see him listed as an attendee. Hmm. Huh. So I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's assuring oh. you that he's here, but. Um... Oh, there he is. Now I see him. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it appears to be muted and the video off. Hi there. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi there. Um, okay, hold on. Let me just share the screen here. Okay, so uh, we're looking to replace the awning uh, on the current building we have. Uh, the awning looks just like the one you're looking at, only it's the color to the right that you see, the natural motion coloring. Um, these are the designs for it. We're just gonna be putting a new cover on there with a new name and yeah. Do you guys have any questions? Um. This, so this is the sum total of it is you're covering color covering it with a red fabric with the word I designed and no correct address, anything yep like that. The, uh, the old one had an address as well uh the old one yes I believe so yeah yeah yes so this is this is the full extent of it yep okay are the uh, Jason ones awnings as well or are they just signs I couldn't tell I think uh, the, the one the one, the two that's, to the right are awnings as well. The one to the left, the cleaners is not. That's just a regular. Just a regular, okay. Yeah. The two though to the right of the store are both also the same kind of awning. Okay. We're not actually changing the mechanism of the awning. We're just changing the cover. Okay. 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 Any, anyone else have any comments on it? Pretty straightforward. Yeah, yeah, right. thank you. Um, anybody in the audience have anything to say? Okay. No raised hands. Okay, 
Our motion to vote. My motion. Okay. I second. Okay, then uh, vote uh, Andrew. Yes. Cindy. Yes. Larry. Yes. Yvonne. Yes. And I'm good as well. Okay. Thank, Thank you guys everybody. very much. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye. Okay, next then would be uh, 305 um, Marinick Avenue. Hi, how are you? We're from Going Sign Company. Hello. Hi. I'm Hello. just going to share my screen so I can show you guys our rendering. Can everyone see this okay? Yep. Okay. Yes. yes. So Valley Bank is absorbing the Westchester Bank. So basically we want to go in and remove the existing sign and in its place install a new Valley Bank sign. And at the same time, we're hoping to reskin the existing awning for to go from the existing red to a more subtle gray color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> and does anyone have any comments on the board or questions? Yeah. I, I I think it looks good. There are four colors on the awning, not three, though. Yeah, right, right. right. Be the one thing yeah. I picked up on. On the awning or on the sign yeah. itself? I mean, the white, gray, yellow. I meant the sign. Okay. Yeah. I think. This, oh this yeah, you know, I see. I don't believe we included the white. We went with this is their logo, so their logo does technically have four colors. I'm not sure if that will be an issue. Mm -hmm. We we. Typically, been somewhat lenient on uh, mm -hmm. logos that yeah. are too flashy. I'll, I'll, I'll point out that the logo is also a little high, but you know, it's not. Again, it's a logo, and I noticed that there's other ones down the street, like the ampersand on Frankie and John, and mm -hmm. mm -hmm. high too. So, seems to fit. Yeah. Anyway, <clears throat> the gray, the gray in the logo it matches the awning, correct? Correct, yes. Yeah, that well that's nice. It is and nice. It kind of blends. It blends yeah, together. It looks, more so, it looks good on the building. Yeah. Right. So the logo is is the white, the yellow and the so well, the whole thing, right? Yeah, right. But yes. The logo and the, the letters in white. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the logo. Okay. All right. All right. Motion. I move. A second. Okay. Um, Larry? Yes. Yvonne? Yes. Cindy? Yes. Larry? Again, yes. Did Larry say yes? Okay. Yes. yes. Oh, I said, I, I meant Andrew. I'm sorry. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm good. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, the, the pictures come up on, on when you're talking here, and, and Larry's picture came up. So I said Larry a second time. My apologies. Um, I, I can't tell you apart. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, and I'm I'm good too. Okay. Thank you all so so much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. I know. <laughs> okay, next we have uh, 732 the Parkway. Hi, good evening. I think Sarah Roberts and the owner is here as well. Uh, my name is Jacqueline Tyler and I'm the architect. Uh, I want to take a minute and thank you for introducing everybody, especially over Zoom. It is extremely helpful. <laughs> um, so thank you. Not all municipalities do that. So I appreciate that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So we were in front of the uh, zoning board 
last year, um, and we were we received a variance um, to re to make some accommodations to the roof of the existing garage um, because we are close to the setback. Knowing that we had to come to you all next, um, so these pictures that you see are were presented to the architectural review board. This is the front of the house. We are the um, architectural review board. You meant the zoning board, I think. I'm sorry. So, <laughs> yes, we were at that. We were. So we are. So we're now, um, unfortunately, rebuilding the entire garage. Um, we um, they experienced a fire, which I will show you here. Um, so the whole thing has been demolished. Um, so we are rebuilding um, within the existing um, footprint of the building, um, and so we. We haven't changed the design um, from what it was previously, but I just wanted to make you guys all aware that there is nothing there um, currently this, at this point in case you had driven by. Okay. Um, um, is, is the footprint of the first floor the same? Correct. Yes. Okay. So you're just rebuilding what was there on the same footprint of the first floor and adding the same second floor that you had showed to the... Exactly. So previously we had proposed raising this... Um, roof up so we're still proposing to do that um even with the with the fire um this is the front elevation here so mm -hmm. essentially this uh this the peak is slightly higher than where it was um in the original if i flip back to these photos back to here mm -hmm. um and it's all still in compliance with the um with our height regulations um, for the finishes, we are proposing. Can I, can I ask you a question though? Sure. Sorry, before you go on. When you look at the photos before, it's a two car garage and there's almost no space on either side of the doors. And this looks like it's a two car garage with a lot of space on the side of the doors. So is that not a two car, is that not a double door? There's two double doors, uh, two single doors previously. Right, but there's almost no space on either side of the doors. And when you look at yours. Yes, we're, redu one, we're reducing the overall width. Of the door. Of the door, of the, so when you take the two single doors compared to these, uh, the one single, the, which is acting as a double, it's reduced in the width. Because now right. it's actually serving one car. If I remember correctly, I saw some gym equipment inside. Correct. Yes, exactly. So that's the purpose in the future is that the, let me flip back to your plan. Yeah, why don't you go to the drawings again? Yeah, all right. So this portion, sorry, on the whole left side will be serving as a treadmill. Mm -hmm. Oh, I see it. Okay, so it's a seven by 15 overhead door. So it's not really a full double, okay. No. Okay. Because a full double would be like 18. All right. Right. Correct. Yes. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. We've reduced the overall width from okay. what currently okay. exists now. Yep. And then um, let me bring you down to the materials. Um, so we're looking to match a similar style to what we have on the house, which is the cedar shake. So that'll be up in the upper portion of this dormer area. And then we mm -hmm. have the vertical siding along the main portions of the garage. Mm -hmm. Um, a majority, most of the roof is the asphalt shingles with some metal roofing accents located here over top of the rear door, over the front awning portion that's over these two doors and on the dormer. Mm -hmm. I'll bring it back up to these so you can see them. The windows, what color are they? Uh, the windows and doors will all be the same black beauty. Okay. And then are you recreating some of the white frame around that you have a lot of white framing or in the in the original house? In the house or not? No. <laughs> no, we're not planning to. Okay. What color is the um the the side of the what I'm looking at? Uh, I'm looking at this elevation. Um Yep. either the the front or the yeah the yep. side so of the, all of this all of the, the vertical trim. is the iron gray james hardy right and no i meant the, the uh, the edge yeah no I, not not that 
the, the fascia the level yeah the fascia yeah the fascias are all the same black beauty as oh, well okay so it's yep. everything's mm -hmm. kind of dark right yes yep okay so the door also is going to be dark correct okay it's going to be that uh, dream fascia so if, okay yeah black beauty don't you more all right yeah, so they're almost this color here that you see on the current door. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Similar okay. to that. Yep. Can you show a picture of the house again? Sure. So it's it's not matching the house. No, it's matching the accent, the, the window colors that are on the house. It's, it's more in line with those, with the darker colors. Anybody else have any questions or comments? Okay, I think that is enough. Um, anybody in the uh, audience? Checking. We got a bunch of people here. Oh, oh no hands raised. <laughs> yeah, I suspect they're waiting for some of the later ones. Um, okay, then I guess we can uh, entertain a motion to vote. I'll make a motion. I second. Okay, let's see. Cindy? Yes. Larry? Yes. Yvonne? Yes. Andrew? Yes. I'm good as well. Okay. Thank you again for your time this evening. Appreciate it. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, too. All right. And let's see. The next item on the agenda then is uh, one Pirate's Cove. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Hi, I'm, I'm John Scavelli. Uh, I am uh, representing uh, the, the Kliegers uh, for the proposed application at uh, One Pirates Cove. Um, and are you guys able to see the screen okay? We are. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, great. I am anyway. Okay, yes. all right. perfect. All right, so the proposed application is for uh, uh, construction of a, a new pool in place of an existing pool um, at an existing uh, single family dwelling. Um, I'm just going to zoom here to the uh, existing uh, site plan. Actually, I'm going to go to the GIS view first. That'll probably be a little bit easier. Um, but there's an existing freeform pool, uh, below ground pool in the backyard um, with some decking at grade um, that uh, is proposed to be demolished. And then a proposed new pool, um, a rectangular pool with a uh, bluestone patio uh, to be installed. Um, in a similar location, but, but the shape and, and size is different than the freeform pool. Uh, just to kind of jump over to the, the site plan. Um, so there's this existing pool here that's proposed to be demolished, um, along with the um, existing uh, wood deck um, is proposed to be demolished. And then the proposed plan is to install a, uh, a new uh, gunite uh, 20 foot by 45 foot um, in-ground pool. Um, it's generally in the same location. It is getting a little bit longer. Um, you can kind of see the existing pool location here um, and then actually having just a, a larger um, patio area surrounding that um, the pool and then a, um, a separate spa area um, in, the, in the patio off to uh, this side over here. Um, in terms of the 
So there's a proposed uh, stormwater management system as well. So there's a proposed uh, dry well system um, that will collect the, the rainwater um, to discharge into, uh, into the area. I'm gonna pop back up to, um, into this area, which is to propose to be, uh, remain as a, a grass area. Um, and then also in terms of the screening, um, I'm actually gonna jump to a picture. Oh. Oh, sorry. Just gonna pull this picture up here. Okay. So there's already a, um, a, a black metal fence surrounding the property um, with uh, landscape screening. So that's all proposed to, to stay as is on um, the proposed project really is to um, install the, um, the new pool along with the, the new uh, patio area around the pool. Um, whereas the fencing and landscaping is proposed to remain the same around around the perimeter. Mm -hmm. Here. So I don't know if you guys had any, any questions or any clarifications. What what is that um, kind of bite taken out of the bottom left hand corner there? Oh, so there's a a tree here that's proposed to remain. Um, you know what it means. You may be able to see it in this picture here. Yeah, it was more to accent, I believe, it pulled, I believe it's this tree here, um, but it was just kind of accent that corner. So as part of the application, all of the existing trees are proposed to remain. There's no proposed removal of, of any of the, um, of the existing trees for the new pool. And can you remind us what the patio material will be? Sure. Uh, it's a uh, blue stone set in, in concrete. Mm -hmm. mm. And then the coping as well will be a, um, a, a blue stone coping around the, the pool. And the pool is a, a gunite concrete pool. Okay. If you could just go back to the plan and okay. maybe just show us where, you know, outline, walk us through where the fences are and where the uh, other pool equipment is, you know, the pump. Sure. Out. Sure. So the, the fence, um, so the front of the, the property is um, off the street here. So the fence starts, if, if we're looking at the right side of the house, so the existing fence starts here and it runs around the whole perimeter of the lot. And then along the back here, there's the fence, but it does, um, there's a lot of landscaping and trees. So it kind of blends in, in behind all that landscaping, but the fence wraps around and then it returns to, to finish the barrier off at this back uh, left corner of the property. And then the, the pool mm -hmm. equipment is um, tucked in um, on, on the side here, um, adjacent to the house. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, the, the, the main um, area where this would be visible from is Orienta Avenue, probably, but living in the neighborhood, I know you can't really see through the screening much, so there's not much to see there. Yeah. All right. Any uh, other comments from the board? Mm -mm. How about from the uh, audience? No, no hands raised. All right. Entertain a motion. Oh, wait, wait, wait. The neighbor yeah. raised her hand and she unraised it. Now she raised it again. <laughs> okay. Maybe we should drop out of the drawing so we can see who this person is. Ernest Wong would like yeah, to ask a question. The woman too. Well, now we got another hand raised. Whatever. <clears throat> we have Claire and Ernest. Both of you are muted. So if you'd like to speak, please unmute. Okay, I'm unmuted. Okay, you're up. I'm unmuted too. 
Okay, I had sent in questions, comments, just regarding the two points. And one was a concern, and it would really be probably for the village engineer, as to whether the proposed dry well system, et cetera, will be adequate to keep the stormwater, et cetera, on the property. Because now there's gonna be a lot more impervious services that, surfaces than there are currently. So I don't know if anybody has did, considered that. Did you that. say you had two, two questions, Claire? Um, yeah, and the other was in terms of um, potential noise um, that might come from having a larger pool area, deck area, et cetera. So as I said in my comments, we have no problems with noise right now from the Klegers since they moved in. We did have problems, and Ernest will probably mention that too, with the previous owner. So there is a concern about potential noise and whether there's any necessary abatement in terms of additional foliage or anything. Okay, and, and might you just point out where you, uh, where you live? Directly across Pirates Cove, 890 Pirates Cove. Okay, so you're the, you're the neighbor. The other corner. On, to the yes. right, on, so the house is mm -hmm. between the pool and you, okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, very good. Okay, um, do you want to uh, address those uh, questions? I, I, I forgot the name of the presenter, I'm afraid, I'm sorry. Sure, yeah, in, in, in regards to this, the, the stormwater, um, so yeah, there is a proposed dry well system which, which will um, is designed to uh, capture the, the stormwater and then um, discharge it into um, the chambers at this location. Um, so these specifications and, and details will all be submitted to um, the, the building and engineering department um, for review. Um, so we haven't received any sort of comments back, but, but that will go through that, that process. And, and that is um, anticipated to be part of the project to address any stormwater um, for the new proposed um, impervious surface areas. Um, and in regards to um, the noise or the use, um, so that there's really not any sort of um, change in use. There is an existing pool and decking. It's more of just um, they're looking to re rebuild it. And, um, you know, so I don't think they're looking to use it in any sort of different fashion than, than what they currently have at, at the property. Um, I don't know if, if the village does have any sort of regulations in terms of use and, and, and things like that during times of day or, you know, you know, you know, music volume or decibel volumes and things like that. But if there are restrictions, I, I, I'm sure the Kliegers were, are, are, you know, they'll, you know, will abide by, by all those um, regulations. Okay. Um, yeah. And I, so it's clear. I think, I think the answer is, is, as you identified the, uh, the building department and the village engineer will, have to ensure that the, uh, the the water runoff is is managed uh, properly, and there's certainly plenty of uh, regulations and all concerning that. Um, the noise is, you know, as you heard, they're they're not adding anything, but not planning to do anything different. It, it sounds like, um, you know, so. I, you know, I, yeah. I don't know what we can really say say to that. Yeah, I think I think uh, I mean the noise is not really an architectural issue anyway, and that's really just a neighbor to neighbor issue. <laughs> From my standpoint, I'm it's not going to affect my voting. I'm just saying now. It's also across the street, not directly next to the pool area. Yeah, so hope if there's loud parties and you know if it's a uh, you know. Uh, problem and there's the I think the usual you know mechanisms for dealing with that um, but I, I don't think there's anything uh, special from a VAR point of view uh, I hope that addresses your questions uh, uh, Ms. Walter. Um, now there was somebody else who had a, a question or comment uh, that was me Ernest Wong okay um, and actually, I think Claire has addressed those points. And my concern is uh, largely, again, with the water runoff, because our house is um, directly across on the other side of the fence. 
And I just wanted to confirm that the, the pitch of the deck, the proposed deck, is going to be going towards Orienta um, and that the um, water drainage system is appropriate for capturing all the water because there's going to be more uh, impervious material in the backyard now. And as uh, Claire can verify, our water table is very high over there in Pirate's Cove. Mm -hmm. It is. Uh clear that there is more impervious material. Um, but uh, again, John, you, you want to address that? I, I don't know if the uh, patio is pitched or if it's flat. Yeah, it, so it, it, it will be pitched and, and there'll be a series of, um, of trench drains along the perimeter of the, of the patio that would then discharge into piping below grade that would then um, direct towards the, uh, the stormwater uh, system. Um, and then in, in regard to the sizing of it, it, it will be sized for, for all the new impervious surface areas that, that are being added to the property. Um, so it, it is going to be designed and, and, and reviewed with the um, engineering department to, to comply with, with those regulations for, for stormwater management. Do you have an issue with runoff now, Mr. Chan? Um, I don't have an issue with runoff right now, but, um, you know, um, the water um, does accumulate occasionally on our backyard, but not coming from, from their property. Okay. Well, mm -hmm. well hopefully it's, uh, this maybe is even an improvement uh, being, you know, you know, addressing the more current regulations, but um, from a, a BAR point of view, uh, you know, we have to kind of leave it to the- uh, To the living water. Um, yeah, I just hope that when the engineer reviews it, he realizes that the Kleekers had big flooding in their driveway from Ida right after they moved in. So the, the engineer needs to look at the entire picture, not just the additional part, uh, from my point of view. Hi, this is Dennis Drogan, the building inspector, or at least one of them. Um, yeah, Kelbert Sessions, who is acting as the village engineer right now, will make a thorough review and their stormwater will have to meet or exceed the requirements for the area, for sure. And all that would be public record after it's submitted and done. So you can, you can view that later on if you choose. Thank you. Just want to make sure you were looking at it. I don't have the knowledge to do that. That's, that's what we're here for. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you can find me on the website, Dennis, Dennis Drogan, in the building, my email, my phone number's there, whatever you might need. All right. Well, thank you, you folks, for your comments. Um, there, I assume that's those are the only people who had comments, Barbara? Let's just double check. No other hands raised. Okay, entertain a motion. A motion. I have one question. Oh. Sure. <laughs> Go ahead. Does it have an automatic cover? No, I just wanted to ask about the call. Uh, Mr. Scavelli. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, <laughs> the question for an automatic cover? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Does it have uh, a cover? No. Um, not an automatic, it will have a cover, not an automatic cover. Okay. All right, thanks. Yeah. Okay. All right, I guess that answered your question. Um, yes. <laughs> <all right. laughs> okay, we've, we've had a, it's already been motioned. Um, Yvonne, how do you want to vote? Yes. Okay, and Larry? Yes. Cindy? Yes. Andrew? Yes. And I'm also okay with it. Okay. Thank you, John. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good Thank evening, you. everyone. Thank you. You too. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, 945 Sylvan Lane is next.
Bill, just so you know, sometimes your volume is very low. My volume is low. Yeah, sometimes. Okay. Um, I'm not. You look pretty far away. away from your computer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Can you hear me? Come on now? in. <laughs> <laughs> like how big my head is in my screen. Like how small your head is in your screen. Uh, I, 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 I turn up the Doing volume. It for vanity I, have, I have no idea how to do that. <laughs> it's not just that I have a big head. Can you see and hear me? Yes. Yes. Hear you. Okay. Yes. Okay. Hello, Sangi. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Good evening and happy new year to you. My name is Sungi Park. Thank you. And architect for the project. Uh, so the scope of the uh, this project is to construct a deck at the back of the property. Uh, actually to replace the existing deck. So let me just zoom in this uh, map here, just to uh, show you the location of the site. Um, so the, the site is highlighted here and it's at a cul-de-sac at the end of the Sylvan Lane off of Oriental Avenue. And the back of the property is bordering the Hampshire Country Club. So making this property uh, really private as well as you know, great views uh, out to the Country Club. So it's a perfect setting to sit out on the deck and enjoy the view. Um, mm -hmm. so let's go to the site plan here. Mm -hmm. So, so the gray shaded uh, uh, area is indica indicating the, the proposed structure, uh, which is actually the, the proposed structure is about the same width as the existing deck, but it's going to be a little deeper to provide a, a comfortable space for seating as well as uh, dining. Uh, still, this uh, structure is well within the uh, joining setback indicated as a uh, dashed line here. So this corner is about 41.9 foot setback. And this corner is about 51 foot setback. So it's a, you know, it's, we have a plenty of setback uh, distance here. And before we go to the plan, I just wanna walk you through um, the existing photos uh, of the property as well as the neighbors. So this view here is taken from uh, Sylvan Lane, looking down the cul-de-sac, and that's the house, our site. Uh, and, and here, uh, this is looking at the, uh, the right side. This is our site, 945 mm -hmm. Sylvan, and this is 939. And this house uh, at the corner is shown uh, the, the, the side of the, I mean, the left end of the house is a 935 Sylvan Lane. And this house, uh, 939 Sylvan is not right at the cul-de-sac, actually it's set back much further from the cul-de-sac and it's uh, accessed by the right of way, uh, actually it, uh, on my client's property. So it's, it's quite set back. Um, and this, these are another view. And this is the house on the left side, 950 Sylvan. And these are another view looking at the right side from the front, uh, front lawn. And this is the rear view uh, looking at the back of the house with the existing deck here. And it's the side view of the house and the deck. And the opposite side uh, on the left side of the house, uh, another view. And that's uh, looking at the Hampshire uh, Country Club property. Uh, that's, uh, I believe, the maintenance building of the club. Um, and these are the views toward the Country Club looking west. So you can see it's a really great open view here. 
and uh, another view. And the last is looking at the left side property. Um, as you can see that uh, there are many mature trees uh, and heavily vegetated. You can hardly even see the, the house, barely see the house. Um, so let's go back to the plan. Um, okay. So on the left side, uh, it's showing uh, the existing uh, condition. So the ex existing deck is a bi-level deck, the lower, lower deck here and upper deck, which actually reflecting the, the level change changes of the house, that north end, this portion of the house is added later and which has a, about a foot lower than the rest of the house on this level. So that is reflecting the changes of the, the house level. But, but since it was, even though overall uh, area of the deck, existing deck is not that small, but, but that makes it difficult to furnishing, you know? So it was always kind of tight, uh, when when you try to furnish it, uh, seatings and uh, sectioners, uh, you know, outdoor sectioners. So so uh, on the right side, uh, it's the let's just, let's just zoom in a little bit. It's a proposed uh, deck with a screened-in deck here and an open-air deck here. And what we are trying to do is to keep the uh, open air deck and screened in deck at the same level as much as possible so that they, the two areas have uh, pretty good interactions and connections. And uh, so the lower deck portion is uh, much smaller than existing. And uh, let's see, the, the ceiling of the uh, ceiling of the Screened in that is it will be a, a cathedral ceiling, so it's open, and the gable end will have also uh, the screen, so it's going to be bright and airy space. And um, and this open uh, air, I don't know, screened in that is right outside of the dining room, so this will be a great place for the outdoor dining area here, and the the open air deck is right outside the family room. Um, the, the proposed uh, screened, screened in that roof slope is uh, same as the rest of the house. That's the elevation view. Um, but the, the pitch of, of the screened in that will be substantially lower than the house uh, ridge. So that, that is the elevation view and um, and then here are uh, two elevations looking at the side, uh, that open air deck in the front and uh, the screened in deck behind. And this is the other and the other side. Um, the material of the deck will be composite and the color will be the lightest gray they offer. Actually this, uh, cut sheet is a little darker than, than uh, actual color, but, but it's the light gray and which will, I think, uh, go very well with the existing siding, which has a little tint of blue in it, but uh, I think both are very neutral color and I think it's gonna go very well. Actually, this is the decking color we chose. So you can see better mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. uh, one, uh, and then the material of the, the frame, uh, framing of the screen is going to be uh, extruded aluminum uh, powder coated in white. And uh, the screen itself will be fiberglass screen, but we are gonna use this um, company fibers. They make this screen uh, with a special coating, which enhance the visibility as well as the air airflow of the space. So that will be great. And one last thing I would like to share is this image because I thought that this is pretty close to what we are trying to achieve in uh, screened in ports. 
So this has a gray backing, gray color and white mm -hmm. uh, columns and, and mm -hmm. uh, guardrails and the ceiling fans and, and the wall, uh, the sconces. And even this one has showing the infrared up here, um, which we are gonna, uh, we are gonna install the infrared of uh, four of them uh, just to further extend the, you know, you can use that space even longer season. So, but our uh, infrared uh, heater is gonna be much slimmer. And uh, so it's, it's a slim line, very thin profile, more linear. So I think it's gonna look better. So that and, oh, only thing difference is that uh, this shows the exposed rafter, but we are going to cover it with a beaded board. So it's gonna be white beaded board ceiling. Uh, and uh, one more thing, there's gonna be no changes of the existing house, including the fenestration um, and no clearing of the vegetation or, or trees and no grading changes. So, so it, any questions? Can you go back to the elevation, please? Sure, sure. Thank you. Okay. I want to so show the whole, I want to show the whole picture. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. No. No. You. You are <laughs> yeah. very, very good at showing the whole project. Okay. Thank you. Easily under, understandable. So yeah. Thank you for that. No, I was just checking the uh, the deck has a uh, what kind of railing is that? Is that going to be wood as well? It's a white the, the railing. White it's, uh, it's white. white handrail and white, white uh, balusters pickets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. Uh, okay, all that is white. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all the fascias and uh, uh, post uh, column feet are going to be all white as well. All white. Yeah. Okay. 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 And all of yeah, the finishes the, to the new mm -hmm. the new screen and deck match the home, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It looks very pretty. I love the porch. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I think it's going to be a very, very nice area to be there. Yeah, yeah, they're so. never going to want to leave it, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uh, what is it and under the deck? There's um. It's just open. Board. Nothing there. It's open. Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I know. But mm -hmm. what is it existing? It says existing. I'm looking at the west elevation. There's a door and a window, and uh, it's what is a. Oh, you mean this a bedroom or something? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's a basement uh, uh, family room. It's a basement. Room. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it's going to be all open, and the the posts are going to be wood as well, painted yes. wood or yes. Uh, the okay. post is going to be pressure treated wood. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. But but painted white. So we're looking yes. at everything mm -hmm. white. Now the existing house is gray, right? It's you, gray, a little blue tint in it, but it's ah, very yeah, subtle. Yeah. So uh, yeah, yeah. it's very neutral color. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. No, I think it looks very nice. I think you were so um, clear and explained that I don't have any more questions for you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else have a question or comment? From the audience, perhaps, Barbara? Let's see. No hands raised. All right. Um, entertain the motion to vote. A motion. Vote. I second. OK. Yvonne? Yes. Cindy? Yes. Andrew? Yes. Larry? Yes. Okay, me too. Very Thank good. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So next is uh, 830 Pirates Cove.
Good evening. Good evening. Uh, can can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay. For some reason, it's a little bit garbled. Okay. Um, Liam Winters. I'm representing Mark and Karen Epstein. Uh, they bought 830 Pirates Cove Road uh, beginning of October, and um, our plan on this is to um, let me just show you the the drawings. Okay. Um, let me show you the site plan right here. So the existing home is outline is right here. And what we're planning to do here is uh, put a second story on in the middle of the structure. Uh, here's the center of the front door and we want to go from about here to about here. Uh, we're not touching the ground at any point. Um, we have a platform at the front door right here. We're going to be reusing that and reusing uh, the exterior walls and interior foundation walls uh, to support the second floor. Second floor is going to be a uh, master suite, essentially, master bathroom, bedroom, uh, a small office space, closet and storage, and mechanical room. Okay, so I need to minimize this. Basement level, we're not touching that except to bring uh, foundation work down on this level here and out along here. So on the first floor plan, as I zoom in here, you'll see that this area of red is basically where the second floor addition is gonna be, does not come beyond that. Right now, the front door is actually interior to the envelope of the house. So we have no closets, so they have no closets. So we're gonna to try to use the, what well, we are gonna use this existing platform that has a foundation under it and move the front door out to that put closets over here. So that's the extent of the addition. But again, it's on top of existing hardscape. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second story, if I zoom in here, you can see exactly what we're planning on doing. Um, and you see that the rear of the master bedroom is gonna be on top of the the living room, and then they have a deck that's basically coming out within the envelope of, not the envelope, but how the roof comes down here. And I'll show you in the elevations and sections. So this is kind of a private little deck facing the water. Okay, um, here's the existing structure as we drew it. Here's a close up elevation of how it looks right now. Mm -hmm. And as I said, on axis with the existing front door, which we're simply going to bring forward, uh, we're going to create a large gable right here where the envelope is going to be the master bedroom from here to here, closet, bathroom, storage, and mechanical room. As you go around the side of the house, this is the left side as you look at it from the street. So there's the front entry. There's a garage over here. Uh, what we're going to do is cut out this garage door and make a side entry because there's no way to access um, the interior bathroom that they use for, a, for the pool room. So people are going to come around this way, just going to shorten that becomes a one car garage and they have lots of parking space over here. Um, so you can see the large gable that we're putting on top right here, and it intersects with a large center um, structure over the front door. This is the right side. And you can see back here um, where the water, there's a deck over here and here the, the existing master suite, which is just gonna turn into one of the children's bedrooms. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, now, the rear of the house is really why they bought the house. Uh, you can see up here, this beautiful view, the pool. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not touching anything in this area. No piece of hardscape is uh, being expanded, which is really important to us. Um, you can see that we have a similar gable over the, the master bedroom. 
Um, and then we have windows. This is the hallway to the staircase downstairs. This is their kind of home office space, closet and bathroom. And instead of having a glass or stainless steel railings, we actually have a, um, uh, the roof comes around here and ties in. And then we just have scuppers in here where water is gonna drain out. And that's the existing structure. Mm -hmm. So these are the neighbors directly as you look at 830 to the right, the very modern house in the corner. Um, we have not been on their property, but we've walked around. Um, I don't think we're really impacting them um, very much. And they definitely have a, um, some land along here that takes them down to the water. I think they have a dock as well. The neighbor to their right is this structure, this house. Mm -hmm. This one is another house up the lane a little bit across the uh, street from the from the roundabout here. And then direct next door neighbor uh, is this one right here. And I believe they, I think they uh, either live out of state or out of country. Um, uh, the, um, the Epsteins have reached out to their neighbors, I believe all but one of them to be able to try to talk to them about what they're doing. Any questions? Or with the board, any, uh, anybody on the board have any questions or comments? The, uh, the materials, can we go back to the elevation, please? I'm sorry, for some reason I can't hear you. I'm, it, it started oh. as soon as I started to, no, I okay. think it might be me, but when I started to share the screen, I lost uh, some oh. of the audio. But I think you asked about um, materials. Uh, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Going back to the um, elevations, I know there's a lot of details and stuff. Can we? Can yeah. We um, I'll, I'll bring you up to the existing photographs. Um, we really don't want to tear the house down and start over because, so we're not going to change mm -hmm. anything. Um, okay. These shingles have been power washed and cleaned. Uh, they mm -hmm. seem to be in good shape, even though they're, you know, they're maybe a little bit thin. Um, but everything we put on the house is going to match yeah. the color. The soffits are going to be the same, the gutters, the white, um, mm -hmm. the roofing okay. over here. We're going to reuse all of it. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And we're, and we're even using, reusing the front door if we can. Um, and you can okay. see, um, if you look at these windows in the back, mm -hmm. they're terribly expensive. They're really good quality. Um, they're and nice, our, very nice. Our, our hope is to keep everything here and reuse sure. it exactly as it is. Yeah, they look so. nice. Yeah, yeah. So okay, so everything is matching existing, and then all, all the new trim and fascia also matching existing, which is yep. kind of a is a white or exactly or an off white. Oh, okay, yep. and the windows are going to be white. All, all of that and yes. match of the existing. Okay, so what I'm looking there, uh, I mean, yeah. The balcony that you were saying is actually you have roof instead of any type of railing. Is, is the roof itself? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So exactly. Into, into it. Okay. All right. Okay. Could you show the uh, second floor plan again for a second? Sure. Let me zoom in for you. How's that? So this. Mm -hmm. the, the transept volume here is over the bedroom and this sitting area. And then, okay, just, just trying to see what was going on. So these other, then it goes this way over these guys. Okay. Uh, and in total, I believe it's uh, 1,300 square feet that we're adding to the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Any other questions? Um, I, I think don't... it's a fine renovation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good looking. <laughs> I do I think there are uh, a couple of uh, people who wish mm -hmm. to. Uh, yes, there are. From the. Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm not sure if I can hear better, but right now it's all kind of it's fuzzy. Uh, really strange. Christopher Call and George. 
Jane, George Janes and Cliff Davis um, who wish to uh, add something, I guess. Hello? Can, can you see Cliff Davis? Call oh, the video. Hi. Uh, good evening. Um, I'm an attorney in White Plains, 202 Mamaronic Avenue, third floor, White Plains, New York. I represent Christopher Kaw. He is the adjoining neighbor at 840 Pirates Cove. Oh, okay. Um, as this board well knows, um, pursuant to section 6.1, it has to make a determination whether the proposal will adversely affect the desirability of the neighborhood. In 6.2, whether it will promote the public prosperity, conserve the value of the building. And in 6.7, under three, it has to determine whether it's appropriate. And specifically, it has to determine the compatibility under 3C, the compatibility of the design features of the structure with the terrain on which it is to be located. Now, Mr. Winters stated, he said, I don't think it has an impact on the neighbors. Well, he didn't really do an analysis of whether there would be an impact on the neighbors. What he showed you was an addition of a 1300 square foot house. You didn't understand the context of where it is in the neighborhood. You don't understand the context of where my client lives at 840 Pirates Cove. My client is back from the water. 830 Pirates Cove is right on top of the water, as you saw in the plants. So when you analyze it, and I have, we've retained an urban planner, George Janes, who will do a presentation with slides, visual impact of showing that as a result of this massive structure, of this addition of turning a ranch into a large house that it will virtually completely block the views from 840 Pirates Cove. Now, certainly this board's job is not to just determine whether it's zoning compliant and whether the colors look good. It has to be in the context of the very community. This is the board that affects the neighbors from overreach. And what I would say to this board and our expert will show it is that there's overreach here. That when you look at the compatibility of the design on the terrain, the terrain is at the lower level. My client, when you look at this house, what they did is, and we believe it wasn't done recently, but the elevation is approximately four feet high. The elevation is four feet higher than my client's property. So it blocks the view, it creates an urbanization in this area. And we submit to this board that the board should not take any action tonight because there are issues of zoning compliance. Whether you look at the 1957 code and the house was built in 1966 and you look at the present code, the front yard setback is 25 feet. That's the requirement, it never changed. When you look at the topo survey that was submitted in Mr. Winter's submission, it shows that the setback is only 22.3 feet. It's right on their topo survey. So we submit just on that alone that they would have to go back to the engineering and building department and figure out what they're doing because that could very well affect the size of the house. Next is the floor area ratio. Um, I'm going to cut you off. I'm, I'm sorry, um, Mr. Well, if you... well, I mean, this this is this is uh, not the, the sort of uh, is not a zoning hearing. Um, yes, it's it's not a zoning hearing, but I have to make I have to make my argument, and and let me set it forth, and then you guys can make your decision. Well, that... okay, within a reasonable amount of time. Yeah, okay. because, so, you know, with uh... regarding <clears throat> with regarding floor area ratio, the basement should be considered because a basement is only excluded if less than three feet is exposed. We submit that it's more than four feet are exposed. Further, 
in the side yard setback and we heard from another person who came in with a pool and some people on the board raised issues about the mechanicals in the pool accessory. Well, here the generator is 8.03 feet from my client's property. The generator is 8.03 feet. And that is in the side yard setback. It's unlawful. So when you look at the floor area ratio, you look at the side yard setback and violation and the and, and the violation of, of the side yard setback, it should be going back to the engineering and the building department. And then when they come back to you, you're gonna see a different house. And we'll submit to you, and what I would like to do is have my client address the issue, is the, the disastrous impact, the visual impact that, 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 this, that, that the creation of this addition on this property, because, the situ, because where it's situated, and where my client is situated, that is going to totally block his view. So um, I've said all that I want to say tonight. I would hope that you can um, elevate uh, Mr. Kaw, uh, my client, and he could address it. And then Mr. Jane, uh, my expert, can address the board. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to ask that we uh, limit uh, your uh, speaking time to. Uh, well, we we. If there's a lot of people, we we would say one minute, but let's make it a, like two minutes, give or take. You know, let's. I, I don't want to turn this into a, a zoning hearing. Um, I will say that it it does have to conform to zoning, and whether or not we uh, vote on its merits, um, then if if we say it's okay, and and then it does get go back to zoning and there's changes that would have to come back to us. So, you know, to the extent that it, you raise issues that you think it doesn't conform with zoning, it will have to conform with zoning, whatever we do here. Um, that said, Mr. Cobb, please uh, state what you'd like to say. Yeah, thanks a lot, Mr. Mr. Binza. And, uh, you know, I'll obviously be very brief. Um, you know, I, th I think what, what the issue is, it's just a combination of factors, right? I think there will be houses that are high um, and there are houses that are wide, uh, but you know, this, this house, although it says it's gonna be just two, two floors, it's actually gonna be 28 feet. And it's pretty surprising because for a 12 feet floor, usually if it's higher than 12 feet, you have to count 1.5 times, you know, the, the, the floor area ratio. Here it's 28 feet. There's only really two, two floors, and and when you look at the plan, you feel that you know even on the attic they could do you know uh, more space. So it's 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 pretty wide because of the setbacks. They're not really respected. It's pretty close to the house, so it becomes a real wall. And the issue that I also have is in the past, you know, on, on the on the side of the house, they really always use it as as a dump and and uh, really the rest the rest side of the of, of the house. And you know you see a little bit on the picture here, but because you know all of the equipment is detached, if I you know the brain works so so much that you know when you have a nice view, you kind of you kind of forget it. But if you have this big wall, then this will become hugely obvious. And and they are clearly not only within our setbacks and hugely in the property, but also even uh, in in easements. Um, and you know we'll show you pictures of, of how that that view is going to look. Uh, but you know we're going to be facing a view where, frankly, there's going to be one big wall that's very close to us, um, and on the side, you know, pretty much a dump, right? So you know, at least some part of it should be fixed, um, um, you know, in, in, in our opinion, because it's, it's just going to be too much. And, and you know, in the same way that I think they don't really represent the the, the setback distances in, in the proposed plans correctly, um, I think they also probably don't, you know, um, um, you know. Uh, sh show the, the the floor area ratio as well very correctly, and and so my issue, is, you know, the floor area ratio is designed so you can have high houses, but if it's high and there's two and a half floors, they have to be a little bit narrower. Yeah? It's both very wide, so as high as it can be, probably, um, um, and you know, uh, usually when you have a 14 floor feet, it should be one and a half. Uh, you know, flow error ratio. Yet they don't count it. I don't know how they do it. That's that's on that's that's the interior uh, measurement, Mr. Carr. The house itself can be is I think I think here it's thirty five feet to the mean medium point of the roof, so it's it's under that. Yeah, they, but, they but if you one and a half times for a twelve foot floor to ceiling. Yeah, maybe we can go to a few pictures. So it'll yeah. give you a better idea. Can I ask? Can I ask a question? 
Mr. Carr, you have a two-story house, right? Yeah. And the house on the other side is a two-story house, right? Yes. So are you saying that this house can't have a second story because you don't want it to? No, I'm, I'm saying it's probably, it's probably really because a, because because as soon as they go up a second floor, you're going to lose that view. Yeah, right? yeah. No matter how, how tall it is, it's going to be. I, I agree. And, and that's not an issue. They have the right to put a second floor. It's just it's because it's really high. It's actually I think it's a two and a half floor that they're hiding into two. And it becomes well, any, any second floor is going to have a roof that goes up above the second floor, right? I mean, that's just part of a second floor. That's correct. But in this case, maybe the issue is if it wasn't, if, it, if you put it that high, you should, it should be a little bit more now. But I'd like to show you a little bit. You Chris, if you can let George go through the photos. Very briefly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, uh, my name is George James. I'm an urban planner. Mr. Ka engaged me to do photo simulations to show what this would look like from his property. This is from his terrace. This is the existing view from his terrace. Um, what we ended up doing was we took the plans um, and we modeled in 3D the, the building as proposed and we did a verifiable photo simulation, meaning it can be double checked and audited and it's, it's dimensionally as proposed. Mr. James, may I ask just one uh, simple question? Mr. Ka's house, the house, as we look at this picture, the one immediately to the right? No, this no, is this is from my... his deck. So it is behind. Now where, where does Ms. Where's Mr. Ka's house? It's relative just... to this house. Yeah. So it's... it is, we are on his property. It is right oh, behind. Oh, so he's across the street? No, no it's no. right next door. It is the okay, it okay. Is the so contemporary house, house, right? Back. It is the, the contemporary house. One. It's the, it's the modern house. Yes, yeah. 840 Pirates Cove, the modern house. Um, and this is from the terrace okay. of that house. This is the view. It's All the right. far so, left part of the terrace, correct? The far, far no. left corner? It's, it's, it's exactly the center of the terrace. Oh, okay. Okay. I don't, I don't okay. Okay, and so we masked out the, the, the building um, as, or the addition, um, as, and we did the camera match rendered it with the same lens as the camera. Um, we then took the, um, the facades and, and textured it on there. This is not the color. This is just to show the displacement of the view. Um, and then this is the roof line of the proposed addition of the roof line of the existing building. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, I mean, it, it is a substantial um, impact on the view of 840 Pirates Cove. Um, and, yeah, you know, I think, you know, the comment that was made by Mr. Wolowitz that, you know, any second story is going to affect this view is, is, is actually true, right? Um, it's mm -hmm. just how much it will affect this view mm -hmm. and where it's going to affect this view. Well, if I look at your red dotted in line, could you just using your arrow there, sketch in a second floor addition that would be okay? I mean, it looks like anything <laughs> would block the view. Hey, no. I it's more than the view. It's also because it's closed. It becomes just like a big wall because it, you know, even if it blocks the view, if it's if it's if it's a little bit, you know, low, it, it changes the thing. And and again, I'm gonna have a wall and and look at you know what the view is on the side. And we have other drawings. Um, and you know those. I don't know when they've moved this equipment because it's very new. The pool and so it, it's it, it's a dry equipment, but it's clearly extremely distracting. And and you'll have to see it because. It becomes, you know, it, it, it feels like on one side you have a wall and on the other side, so you see obviously, you know, the setbacks are incorrect, right? Because it's 25 feet, this is 22 feet, so we're very close. It should be 20, 20 feet on the side, it's 18. Um, but the, the equipment, which also should be respecting the setback, so they should be 20 feet away, they're eight feet away. Sorry, uh, sorry, sorry. Um, the, the owner bought the house and hasn't even slept in it yet. Um, sorry, and they again, done it work. All this stuff was done by the previous owner and permitted, I believe. We checked that before before they closed on it. So I, I, I'm sorry. I have no idea, but I don't think they've had any variances, frankly. But but I have no idea. No, I, I know, but that that's what, what you're saying is that that's not being changed. That's... We're not touching that at all. And then you see, it's even installed that anything. But but have have you know if we can go further and have like aerial views on on you know the type of of, of views we tend to have. You know, it, it becomes a real, you know, if, if, imagine us on, on that side of the terrace, and there was a picture of the terrace, and you have this whole 
piece that really looks like a dump all the time. And then on the, on the mm. other side, it's a real wall. If at least you move the whole you know, equipment like everyone does closer to the house and, and, and you know, the, the house is actually not, it, it's not considered because for you, here it's a site, but for you, it's for the owners, I guess, it's considered and really as, as you know, the dump, right? They have a row of trees to hide it, but it becomes our only view, right? And our only view is this, Plus this big wall that's going to happen, uh, which is ex extremely high again. And you know, Mr. Mr. Will says, Joe, tell me, but what's the purpose of having you know windows um, at the top of these at, at the top of the attics if it's not at some point to you know use that as a roof? And you know, then the, the far should be probably calculated slightly differently. Um, and it's on the top roof, it's on the side roof. But the accumulation of that, it's it's not like you know you can't have a second floor, right? It's just a accumulation of having something that's for the size of the plot. <coughs> wide and high and on on the right side something that is is um is you know ex ex extremely you know uh, visually impairing and so you know you said mr Winters, i don't want to uh, overly cut you off mr but I, I also don't want this to turn into a you know kind of a debate in the, in the here and now um you know let, let let's go back here just i want to see one other thing uh mr um well, i forgot the the presenters Win winters yeah. Win um, could James? you show the, uh, not, not Mr. Jaynes, uh, okay. the, uh, who's the, <laughs> Mr. Winters. Yes. Yeah. Could you show please the, uh, elevation at, with the shows the, the heights? Sure. Oh, where'd I put that? Winters, yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Um, I'm sorry, I got disconnected. Mm. No, you're here. Yeah. Okay, hold on. Okay, uh, can you see this now? Yeah. Yes. Okay, let me okay. see this. Yeah. The height of this is 30 foot five and three quarter inches to the top of the ridge to this. On the rear of the house, that's, that's from the front. Um, let me see what happens here. On the rear, you take an average between the low and the high, and it comes out to uh, to the midpoint of this roof at at twenty six six. So I believe that's how this is measured, not the top top, but no, the that top. Is, that's correct. To the midpoint, still under thirty five feet in the worst case yeah. scenario. Yeah, and thirty five feet is what's allowed, so it, it is right. actually yeah. well below what is allowable. Yeah. Right. Um, and and I'm sorry um, to the neighbor, I didn't mean to represent that I had studied this, but our first request, the re first request by the homeowner was to put the master over the existing uh, bedroom suites. And, and to them, and that made sense. And I said, I think the house would be terribly imbalanced and we'd do better if we moved it to the center and took it off that bedroom suite particularly because of the neighbor's view, which he's got a beautiful house. Um, but mm -hmm. we did consider that, so. Yeah, yeah. also structurally works better for you that way, yeah. following okay. that perimeter. The arrangement, yeah. I think, exactly. it's, it, it makes sense. The other mm -hmm. wise would be kind of silly. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, now to, to some of these other issues, I mean, this is definitely well, lower than is permitted by height. As I can't speak to the FAR issues because we don't have internal measurements and so forth. That's the building department will have to determine that. Um, you know. So, it, so I've done all that stuff and it's, it's under everything by, by a good amount, by probably about I, a thousand feet. Okay, uh, as, as I said, I'm, I can't get into that here. It does have to, of course, conform to zoning um, it's allowed, I think, here to be a two and a half story house. It looks to me to be a two story house, but that's um, that's a, a matter of arithmetic and math that, that you'll have to do with the building department. 
and we'll have to make a determination if it does need to go to zoning, but of course it does need to conform to zoning. And even if we say it is okay from our purview, which I, Mr. Gray, I guess, was that the attorney's name? David. Um, okay, uh, as he pointed out, it has, our concern is that it does not adversely impact the uh, values um, and commodity of uh, the neighborhood. Um, so that's, that's our purview. But if we find it acceptable in that, as you know, it, it still must conform to zoning and stormwater runoff and, and all those other things. Just the fact that we pass it doesn't mean you've passed all those other things, but the building department will determine that. Um, that said, um, now, you know, speaking as a board member, I mean, it looks to me to be, you know, within kind of any reasonable expectations of what a two-story house could be on this site, it does seem to me that the other houses in the area are two-story houses um, in general. Um, it's unfortunate that it, it blocks the view, but looking at um, Mr. James's elevations there, it's hard to picture any second story that would not block the view. Um, I am sympathetic about the, the generator ash things and all of that, mm -hmm. but if that's all permitted and existing, you know, that's kind of not part of your application, and, but that maybe gets into a good neighbor thing where, you know, generators can be loud, and I would hope that you would be willing to work with him to accommodate that at least with, you know, screening and and whatever you can do to, to keep it from Absolutely. looking bad and being noisy. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, all of that said from, you know, the, the things that we're concerned with, um, you know, that, that would be, you know, how, how does it impact the neighborhood as a whole? Um, regrettably, not just the neighbors, one neighbor's view, but the, the whole neighborhood. And you know that that's the basis that I think that we'll be voting on. Um, so that said, uh, does, does anybody on the board have anything further to add before we vote? I would like Bill to move that we vote on the the uh, plan as presented. Yeah. Okay. You know, my, my opinion is the house is completely consistent with many many houses in that neighborhood. And, um, and anyone in that neighborhood should expect that someone is going to build a second story on their house. That's just the way it is in Orienta. Okay. Right. Right. I, I think everyone on, on the board has stated it perfectly. Bill, you addressed all of the issues. And, you know, I would urge that as a good neighbor, they, there would be screening put around the equipment that seems to be an issue. The finishes are beautiful. I think I think it's very thoughtful that you are keeping the same finishes and adding on to the home and, and keeping as much of it, repurposing as much as you can. Thank I think you. that's very nice. And it is a beautiful home. Thank you. I second the motion that if Larry has made a motion, I don't know if you want, Bill, you want to okay, exactly. start it off, but I'll second Larry's motion. Okay, okay. Well, then we'll vote. Uh, so, Yvonne? You're, you're muted, I think, Yvonne. Oh. I don't see Yvonne. Oh, there she is. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I vote yes. Okay. Uh, Larry? Yes. Andrew? Yes. Uh, Cindy? Yes. And, and I will vote yes as well. Um, okay, so with that, it's passed from the Board of Architectural Review uh, perspective, as we've said, uh, issues that you may wish to pursue with the uh, uh, building department and zoning, um, you know, you should, you should still take them up with that. We'll, um, we'll do that. And, uh, Mr. Winters, I hope 
uh, you and your client would uh, would strive to work with the neighbor uh, to, you know, mitigate his concerns to the extent that it is possible to do so. We will. Thank you. I do yeah. have a quick question uh, for Mr. Winters. Will we be seeing you in a year to deal with solar panels again, or that's a uh... Uh, yes, because we intend to reuse them, but there's 54 panels on the house as they stand, and I don't know where we put them. So we, we'd have to be, we're coming back to that. Okay. You have a lot of sun. <laughs> yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you all for your, um, your comments, and... Um, and uh, good luck. I hope uh, this gets worked out to everyone's mutual satisfaction. Thank you. Good night. Okay. And then the next one is 1025 Nine Acres Lane. Uh, Larry, you raised the concern um, that you did not observe. When I drove by on Sunday to look at the property, I did not see the sign posted. Well, perhaps the applicant can address that. Uh, good evening, uh, Robert Keller, architect, Keller and Architects. Um, the sign was put up as far as I know, I actually, had a breakthrough infection and was in quarantine for 10 days, but my office manager went and put up the sign. I believe we handed that in. And I also was back in the office yesterday um, and sent the picture again to Barbara. Um, as far as I know, the sign was there. I'm, I'm not sure what happened if, why, why it's not there, but I actually, I think I might have the photo, um, but I did not put the sign up myself. I so did I, receive the affidavit in a timely manner. I just see what I just see in the chat. <laughs> the neighbors saying there's no sign. They didn't um, see the sign. I wonder if it's somewhere where it isn't very visible. I Hello? may. Hello. I, I believe. Hi, we're the next door neighbor. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. yeah, we were, we live right next door. I walk my dog every night. We saw the sign yesterday for the first time. Now we were way over the holidays, but there has been, there has not been ample time to look at anything in regards to what they're planning on doing here. We just saw that for the first time yesterday. And I went out and took a picture this morning to make sure that we could be part of this. All right. Um, I That's have, my I dog. Do I'm sorry. Happens, in surgery. So um, again, I was not in the office and I was, in quarantine, so I can only find out from my office manager what might have happened. But um, how long is the sign supposed to be up for? At least five. Uh, days I believe it was supposed to be up on the thirtieth, right? Yeah, we were. No, we were. We got back on the twenty eighth. It was not up. It did not go up until yesterday. Uh, well, we've got I, two people here who say they haven't seen it in an affidavit that says it's there. How do we proceed, Barbara? You know, I really, really don't know what to tell you. The affidavit okay. says it was up. Well, Does that mean it was? Uh, did they send a photo of it? They sent they a photo, send but they didn't send the photo until yesterday, I think. Right. I emailed the photo when I got to the office uh, yesterday that my office <laughs> manager emailed. The design went up yesterday. <laughs> I see. Okay, so then let's just pass the next week, to the next session, then. let the neighbors take a look at the sign at the property. I mean, at the, the proposal. Yeah, I think I if, it, if it's, uh, it's, it's probably less than ideal, but if it is acceptable to you, uh, Mr. Keller, um, the, the whole point of the sign is to give the- No, I, I understand that of course, you know, opportunity as far as I knew- comment. So if for whatever reason it it blew over or who knows, um, you know, 
it would it would still be uh, better if if they at least had the opportunity to you know see what was going on. I I understand, and I think it would be better than better for you too to all be in communication. Hi, can I just um say something? Where the homeowners, um, I just uh wasn't aware that you know we were away as well and we have been trying to get on to this schedule for a long time now and we've had a lot of in-person discussions with all of our neighbors for the past six months just you know making sure everyone kind of knew that we were planning to do this um i apologize i if i was in charge of putting the sign up i would have made sure because this is something that we've been you know really really hoping to get on the agenda for and you know we've been trying and i know you know robert's been working around the clock even when he is sick to help us get on the agenda and i'm just curious i would really hate to have to put this off a month because of you know some technicality the is we, it's not a month we meet uh when do we meet again barbara the 20th the 20th of the uh, of okay, and so so it's really just so that the sign can be seen for two weeks. I'm just I just want to be clear because no, I want so to. So we can review the plans yeah, so to make sure we're okay with what you guys are doing. Said there was no sign and was not aware of it and wanted to know what was going on. Um, right. So, is there any? Does it make any sense to look at these plans in case you have comments so we can address those for the next hearing, or would you prefer? not to do that and we can still come back then in two weeks or whatever that is if uh, with the sign back in place to make sure that it's, it's there um i'm gonna say something bill if i may yeah um, and i'm out of school i'm new at this one so i'm going to put it out there Having driven at the property and looked at the drawings, looked at the existing house and looking at the neighbors, I personally find the scale of what you're presenting too large for the property. It may be allowed, but it truly is scaling versus your, what your neighbors are, all right? So I'm not sure if that's gonna cause a discussion in two weeks that we have to go through a whole process or they should really look at it first and then we'll have that conversation but I suspect that will be part of this conversation. Fair enough. Especially considering two and a half stories and what's in your top floor of the ping pong table and the exercise equipment just is very scaled higher than a lot of what's around it. And I, I will say to Robert that, um, Robert Keller, right? Yep. Yeah. Uh -huh. yes. That there are some aspects of the drawings that I think that we would have at, we would have questions at, for example, uh, the, the drawings, since, since we've got to do everything virtual now, we don't actually get the, the paper drawings. Uh, so uh, just saying it's one eight scale doesn't help us too much to say how see what how big things are. There's no graphic scale or dimensions on it. Um, there is, um, it's not clear, it wasn't clear to us if the pool is part of the application or if that is- Oh uh, yeah, it's, it's noted on the application. Well, okay, well, there's, there is little or no information about the pool. Yeah, we do. Um, we, we did try to make the hearing and I do have all of that with me today for, okay. to pull up on the Zoom. There's a, I'm, I'm just telling you stuff that we'll, that we'll be questioned, we'll want to know about. Right. There, there is a, a prefab pergola uh, in the pool area. Um, you know, I, I would assume you'll have some pictures or something of what that is, but people did wonder, uh, you know, that that's another structure. We'll want to know what it, what it looks like, what it is. Um, and um, the, uh, the attic floor is not fully uh, drawn in. It's a little, little hard to, you know, as you know, for it to be a, half floor, uh, then 50% of it has to be under uh, seven and a half feet. Um, the, the, the part that is drawn in is all over seven and a half feet, but it's, so it's a little hard to see what's going on in the part that isn't over seven and a half feet. You know, there's a lot of questions we would be having. So I'm just, just pointing this out to you so that 
I, I suspect that this is it's going to be coming back again anyway. Um, but just to give you the opportunity to be able to address it here, if, if it okay, is, I appreciate that. Yeah, we have the answers to all those questions, but we'll have them. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you do, question. but and and you know, a lot of these things work ease more easily if we're not doing it in this virtual fashion. Um, but you know, I mean, you know, you've been around here a, a long time, and <laughs> you know how it works. But uh, you know, those those were just sort of off the top of the question questions that people had. I know on the on the goings. Okay, we'll make sure that those are all addressed, which they are. But I will bring them to the next year. Okay, and then. Um, Barbara, can we uh, make sure then and get it on the agenda for the 20th so that they don't have to wait longer? Sure. Okay. And so there'll be there'll be something about the pool. There'll be drawings about the pool. Yeah, we I, have those drawings at this point. All right. Maybe they, you'll submit them to Barbara so they can be posted this way. The neighbor can everyone can take a look. Yeah. All right. Well, they, they I believe it's consent at this point. But um, we tried to submit for the deadline and there was still ongoing work, but I did have all that with me today. Beautiful, thank you. Okay. Also on the uh, the square footage, I was just looking at the uh, the the chart and looking at the first floor, second floor, and attic. And if you add up those three numbers, it's a little higher than the number that you have. I mean, there might be just look into that for next time, since you have more time now. It's yeah, right the there, on the, the limit. Right, yes. they don't well, add I mean, up. I think our it's a little is... different, but okay. for the total gross in a, in a area. Yeah, and you're right on the edge of the FAR, so you, you'll want to be. Right, sure. they're right there at the very, very yeah. edge, so. <clears throat> okay. But I do think we need it, so. But I will. Uh, well, if there's an addition, you can, that's easy to fix. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank Larry, you. Larry, you're, you're muted. Up. You're talking and you're muted. I was about to say, and as much as I just made noise, there are some still very handsome details in this drawing, <laughs> you know, the, some of the elevations. So, right. We are yeah. well underneath the height of the potential height of the allowable roof line. And Part of the intention here was to have the roof come all the way down to the first floor. So hopefully when you guys see that, it will make you feel like the house is really not that large at all. That was mm -hmm. really the biggest intention of the design was to have the whole house come down to the first level um, with dormers. So it, it's really not a big giant box in, in any way, but we can obviously look at that when we meet with you next. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Did we pass over anything on the agenda? Just first. Uh, first Avenue, first street. First street because it didn't have a sign up. Also, I, I did not understand the drawings because I only saw a drawing of the apartment level, not the first floor. You well, know, that the garage you itself. Had, you had to look at the photographs. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> we, okay. we did have comments. That's, that's about a journey. That earlier. Right, right, right. Okay, I'm yeah. sorry. I, you're right. That was the only thing that was missing. I, yeah, I, a, motion, a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion. Okay, we'll go with Cindy. Everybody. Okay. Okay. Any opposed? No. No. Okay. Uh, you wanna? Let's. Uh, we'll talk for a couple minutes after just to recap, and uh, yeah. you can. Okay. Stop recording.